This is where the fun begins. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OG Star Wars channel here. I am OG Star Wars, um, and we are Coffee Chat. Yes, so welcome to Coffee Chat, um, our, your favorite Thursday morning Star Wars show here. And today we're just going to have fun chatting about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Grand Admiral Thrawn and everything that's coming out in development. Um, we'll have that discussion here, no holds bar. So I am so happy to be here with you guys. I am so excited. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance to check my review, um, it's a compare and contest, contrast review of the teaser trailer. After this, go check it out. Leave a comment as well. I'm not of like Disney apologists and Disney Star Wars fans are very upset with me because of my review um, on Twitter and here on YouTube. So... I think it's it's quite amusing here. So I'm going to go ahead and check in with the chat here. I hope you guys are all doing well. And let me know what's in your mug, what you're enjoying. I got lipstick. Look, at, this is not the stay on stuff that doesn't go all over the place. So I got a little lipstick on my mug there. I'm having coffee as usual. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see who's in here. Oh, yeah. And the poll. I do have um, a poll going on. And it's your favorite Skywalker um, women. So we have um, Shmi Skywalker. Um, we have um, Leia Organa. We have um, Mara Jade. And who else do I have on there? Forgot who else I have on there. Not not Ray wanna, uh, Palpatine wannabe Skywalker. Not not her whatsoever. So go vote, and I will check into it later on, and we'll see who's the winner in that one. And later on, I'll do. Um, one with Jaina and some of them that I didn't include here. Um, let's see here. So Darth um, Dark Mel Depot base um, said that he they wouldn't let the poll wouldn't let him pick Mara. I don't know what's going on with that, so I'm so sorry. And then Soul Assassin, what? No wonder Ray rigged. Yep. And then as you guys are starting to come in, please hit that like button here. And I do have merch. I haven't been promoting it lately. So um, I will get the link later on. But, you know, purchasing purchasing the merch helps me out, you guys. It does. It helps with the channel. It helps me get to the novels that I don't have. Without the Legends label is the task that I'm on, um, the mission that I'm on in um, filling up my library with um, Star Wars um, novels. And I do have some big collections from um, that's not being reprinted, like the Jedi, um, the Young Jedi Knights and The Last of the Jedi. So I do have those series. Those are hard to find and hard to find cheap. So, um, yeah, so that's my mission here. So everything counts. Everything that you guys do um, in support counts towards the channel. Lady T, how are you doing? Another channel member here and Soul Assassin is a mod and thank you guys so much for contributing to the channel any way possible. Soul, you are such a brat. I'm watching you. Beware. Yes, look at her. Uh-oh, don't, don't have Lady T after you now. You gotta beware, beware. And then Jedi Padawan Trela, another channel member. How are you doing? Good morning, good morning to you. And I'm feeling kind of dark today, so I got a little bit of a goth look, I guess you can say, if you want to call it that. But yes, mm, let's see here. And can't wait for this. Hey, OG, and this is from Becky. I'm going to be listening to Kenobi audiobook today. We are going to go through these, these standalone novels, while some of them are not necessarily standalone for Kenobi or Obi-Wan. But these are these are vital stories to um, his lore and his arc post Revenge of the Sith. So we're going to go through that as well. And so first question, be, um, as I'm going through the chat here with you guys, what is your favorite moment of Obi-Wan Kenobi, whether it's in the movies or in the novels? Like if you've read anything and that's even the novels I'm not going to share. So if it's novels during our comics novels or what have you let me know let's get this going let's get this party started everyone soul assassin rigged <laughs> oh my goodness okay vato i'm watching you too 
And um, Alun Roberts, hello, how are you doing? I don't recognize you here. If I haven't rec seen you um, in the previous, welcome, welcome to Coffee Chats, where we sit down and we go over the lore, rather it's through comics. And speaking of comics, I'm also going to pull up the comic that has Obi-Wan Kenobi's lore as well. And that's from Legacy number 16. So we'll go through that too a little bit. We're not going to go through the whole little bit of that um, one, but we are going to go through that lore pertaining to Obi One and Asherad Het. So there we go. And then, <laughs> okay, there everybody's having a muse with each other or making each other laugh. Hey, everybody, good morning and good morning to you, Keely Chow. How are you doing? What's up? And Kathy Skywalker, hey, hello there. And I love your tuxedo cat. I have two tuxedo tuxedo cats. And fun fact about tuxedo cats is that um, you can look it up too. Um, <laughs> they are very intelligent within the cat species, the, the domestic ones, and they're very narcissistic. <laughs> yes. So two fun facts about those two, those type of felines. Um, Chaos Man 17. Well, I know this video is about Obi-Wan. I have to stay, say I'm still unimpressed by the Inquisitors. We'll go over that a little bit too, because there's a point that I want to make. Rebels made, uh, made look like fools. The, e, um, the EU already had competent dark sides, siders like Marge, Jarek, and Lumaya. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's I think the Inquisitors is, um, or for what we see that we're seeing here and about the Inquisitors is from Rebels. It's from Filoni lore. And um, so we'll go about that a little bit. Um, and then I have a $3 super chat from Kathy Skywalker. And let me see what it is not showing. Oh, yeah, it is. It's not showing up on my end here either where I can look. So but thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And Ubali Jubilees. I love that name. <laughs> I love that name. Ubali Jubilee. Woo. Okay. It's 1 a.m., so I've just got a nice ice-cold bottle of water. Well, cheers to you um, for staying up with us and um, coming in and participating in coffee chats. And, um, yeah, Padme. I don't know why I forgot about her. That's that's so sad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I really think that um, I really like Padme. She's not my favorite Skywalker, but I, I like her. And then Orange Chat Review, welcome another channel member. Just dropping in to say hi before I begin my lunch with family. Have a good day, OG. And you too. Let's see here. And GB Luke, pop it in for a hello, OG. Seeing a movie, movie, so I'll have to catch the replay, but looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, you enjoy your movie. Um, have fun. Um, yeah, and hopefully it's worth a watch. Are you going to a theater or are you watching at home? And let's see here, everybody's Josh. And, and am I missing anybody? If I skipped over someone, I'm so sorry. Demajanai, what's up, pimp? What, how are you doing? All right. And then OG Star Wars, hey, pimp, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mike off, and what? Can you hear me? Robert D. Costa, Mike off. Let's see here. <laughs> okay, I couldn't pass. I couldn't watch. I couldn't just pass this one up. Lady T is watching me. <gasps> and the effects of the emojis. And like, it's just, you can see the dramatic little effects of the emojis. Let's see here. And who else do we have dropping in? I have 16 of you beautiful souls here. Star Wars fans here. Original Star Wars fans here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and hanging out with me for coffee chat. Let's see here. I think I got everyone. And if not, oh, Magnino, hello there. And again, let me know what you guys are enjoying here. I have, um, this says, hey, ass, but I have some very fun mugs sometimes. Um, yeah, because that's like, that's how I like to roll. All right. So, Soul Assassin. Oh my gosh. That Grand Inquisitor looks like Terry Bratch. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> Nellie Portman's performance is unfortunately somewhat forgettable. Sorry. That's okay. Um, there's reasons why um, she had to act her certain ways, like in Revenge of the Sith and um, and stuff. And I, I really like her. I like how she presented Padme. 
um she did well with what she was given you know and i think we can all agree because i like the pt i do we can all agree that george could have done better with the scripts or he could have had someone else help him with the scripts um and you know, so I, I, I stand there on that. So they did well. Just like I love Hayden Christensen as, um, you know, Anakin Skywalker and his fall into Darth Vader. Um, so and we're going to talk a little bit about that. I do have that. In fact, you know what? Before we get into Kenobi and as you guys are chatting in the chat, let me know what is your favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi-Wan Ben Kenobi scene, whether movies or novels, comics or what have you. So go ahead and start sharing there. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this up from Entertainment um, Magazine. I want to get this one out of the way because I do have something to say about that. And it also pertains back to how I feel about Vader in Rogue One. Now, you guys are probably like Vader in Rogue One is one of the scenes that are, um, I think it makes Rogue One without Vader being in Rogue One. I don't think it would be as epic. So everything that happens once you get into Rogue One at the end where Vader is going after the plans and that is that is continuity our lore breaking as well. Um, the plan situation where the plans, how they get to Leia, it, it contradicts on what happens in the new hope when he pursues her and basically captures her, um, capture her ship and everything. But you go from this all powerful Vader in Rogue One to this Vader that isn't as powerful in a new hope within, within basically maybe a day because we you know we don't know how long they were um he vader was pursuing um tentative for so um but within within that little time within that time lapse and so that wasn't very consistent i get they want to show that vader is powerful because of anakin because he is the chosen one and you know you know the force he's you know also made from the force basically um but that was just something that kind of took me out of the experience because i'm like what I get what you're trying to do here, but it doesn't quite fit. We go from here and then you can now you got to explain why he's not using the force, force choking Obi-Wan, blah, 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 in A New Hope. So um, let me go ahead and bring that up. So let me know you guys in the comments, what is your favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi scene, whether movies, novels, comics, what have you. So let me go ahead and get this up. Do, 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 do. Have some music here, huh? Okay, Entertainment Weekly. Let me see, make sure that's the right one. Uh, here we go. All right, so let's get here. They finally teased an image about Obi-Wan here, or not Obi-Wan, Vader. And this is the only image that that was given to inter entertainment that we know of, right? And so we know that Hayden is now, you know, suited up as Vader. We knew that already. That's already been discussed. It's nothing new and whatever. And I, I'm good for him. I Like I said, I like Hayden. I love him as Anakin in the PT. Um, I really, and this is just my opinion, and I've heard many other people talk about that. I don't think it really matters if he's behind the suit or not, really because the voice needs it has to be um james earl jones right <laughs> so that doesn't matter so him being suited up and knowing that's that's cool good for him he's back and now he's playing in a suit but did they keep james earl jones's voice yeah so you know so here we go so um one thing i wanted to touch basis on and this is pretty cool i like the highlight I, you know me as a as as an artist and stuff like that, and Vader being one of my most favorite villains of all time, that that's pretty cool. All right, that's pretty cool, you know. And um, so I'll give props. And so when I critique and compare and contrast, if it's not a comic or whatever, I'm really and I this is the first trailer I've teaser trailer that I did ever on my channel. I'm not going to critique the visuals. Really, I'm going to critique the content, the context, there, what's being said, you know, and spoken in it to compare and contrast. And I may say stuff about the visuals and stuff because, yes, I'm an artist. Um, so we have this here. And I want to scroll down here. Um, so Hayden Christensen, they, they wanted to know 
if they're going to share him without the helmet because he's in the, you have his um his medical hyper or um, meditative chambers that he's we see him in an empire strikes back um basically he is you know got an nda he's sworn to secrecy however they ask him um about um portraying or you know acting out and how vader is going to be in the show here and so basically um christensen said um you know and, and revealed we're going to see a very powerful vader and um so that makes me think about um rogue one and how we go from very powerful to a new hope where he's basically him and obi-wan because of the time i know because of the time when it was filmed and how old you know um you know obi-wan is in that there's hardly any force abilities used there's hardly any like um you know um movement and force movement in the dueling and stuff like that and um so me right here this is going to be what 10 years after um revenge of the sith and so i i think back to the dark lord rise of darth vader novel and if you guys have read that let me know um we get a glimpse and mind you this is after after the events after he's put in the suit versus 10 years okay so there's going to be adaptation he is going to adapt there should be adaptation 10 years after i get it but my point is is like dark lord rise of darth vader we get to see his adaptation how the suit is confining to him how like even the the um like the legs are uneven how the boots are heavier how he can't move and um you know move forcefully and i don't mean like forcefully as in pushing and stuff but force like using the force um and how that compromises him we also know that there's some abilities he can't use like force lightning so i'm very curious to see what they mean about being very powerful you know because we know that he had to adapt he had to adapt his form his fighting style that is um given when um he he duels his last jedi on kashik in dark lord rise of darth vader and i think i'll share that clip on my um youtube channel as an eu short and so we have to see that he goes back to a very um primitive or classical style and he's protecting his life support in front of him and that's what's discovered and that his form and everything changes because he has to adapt right and um and so i thought that was very brilliant that james lucino did that and so i wonder are we gonna see glimpses of that in here are they even gonna consider how the suit is going to affect him are we going to see just this overpowerful he can just move any which way he wants kind of vader here um also he's not supposed to be more powerful now than palpatine so that's another question i have so i'm going to go ahead and check in the chat and see what you guys think about that um let me go ahead and scroll up <laughs> black pill one stand by black pill one right uh, yeah because i am questioning because i question and i love the lore i love the eu i love the movies i love george lucas era of star wars and i question what's being coming out i guess i'm a black pill but you know what i guess i'm very bad black pill because i'm not negative i enjoy i can discuss this i can bring out points um my heart lies with george lucas era of star wars and I like to call it some BS. That's okay. That's okay. I'm a, I'm the worst. I'm the the worst black pill ever. And um, let me see here. Let's see here. And then it says, "Looks like Vader from Cloud City." Yep. And Cake, how you doing? How are you doing? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. It's always nice to see James Earl Jones as Vader. Yeah. And that's the thing. Are they going to keep the same voice? Because if it's not, I'm sorry, 
that that is a huge huge mis misstep let me see here he's probably the top five for sure but Sidious is more powerful so was his grandson um arguably and arguably uh Asherod head as a Sith yes and I can't wait to get into to that today I'm excited about that um especially not in a life support suit for exactly and that I think James Lucino really did well on giving us this Anakin transitioning into Vader and how he's even suspecting Sidious, the Emperor, the Emperor, about the prison of the suit that he created for him so that he can't just overpower him now. And um, so there's a lot of depth going in that. And so, you know, so again, comparing and contrasting on what I see here, and hopefully for those, if you guys are going to watch that, no judgment, right? Enjoy. If you guys have a YouTube channel and critique it, I'll go watch. Um, I watch good and bad reviews, people who hate and people who like, because I like to get a broader. Does it mean I'm going to go and support Disney Star Wars? No, it doesn't. I just like to hear people's opinions. And I'm not going to tell you, oh, because it's a teaser trailer or because it's an article, you can't critique it because we haven't seen it yet. Um, yes, you can, because they're already given us information and we can question, okay, so what's going on here? Um, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't look right. Um, this looks like this interaction's gonna harm the continuity. We have the right to question that, right? Let's see here. And, um, let's see here. No one else compares James Earl Jones. Please, no, um, no mats alone. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Palpatine, my good, my God, Vader, quit Breaking the mask I have made custom custom for you. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Let me go down and scroll down because I know you guys are just, you know, chatting away here. And let's see here. Um, um, Nilthus also wasn't a Sith philosophy um, wise as by Couture too. He's so consumed by the dark side. Literally, he's just hungry all the time. Yes. Um, I agree. Um, I read it and Kenobi. Yeah. And they're great books. They're great reads back to back because they happen at the same time. This is how I think that Disney should have done this. Instead of trying to have them both in the same series and saying that they're going to have a, a, an epic duel, one more rematch. I'm sorry, Force Vision's not a rematch. That's just a vision. So a rematch is basically them coming together in their story and fighting again. All right. So, um, so having them come together breaks that continuity and the intention that George set between Revenge of the Sith and um, A New Hope, where their first meeting, their first duel was Mustafar. The last one was on the Death Star. So that that really, really, I question that and their decision. What they should have done was do a separate Vader show, just like we have a separate Dark Lord Rise of Darth Vader book, and then a separate Kenobi just like that, and make Kenobi. They wanted to do a Western-ish thing so bad, and um, they could have done that with Kenobi and showing how he's adapting to the common life and how um, he has to learn how to stop responding as a Jedi, just like he does in Kenobi. Kenobi's a great novel to refer back to that transition. He, yeah, he still is in a lot of, you know, like heartbroken, broken state, questioning things still, trying to commune with Qui-Gon, all of that. But in the end, he starts getting some resolution. He starts getting, he starts coming to a terms that he's going to be okay, that the mission he on, he's going to be okay. He's beginning to show some hopefulness that, um, that his path, his mission, the exile he's on protecting Luke training under Qui-Gon, you know, is what the Jedi need and what he needs and stuff. And so he starts becoming more hopeful. Um, yeah, there's other things that happen, like we're going to get into it with, um, with Legacy Comic here pretty soon. So they should have, they should have done it that way. But again, you know how it goes. It's all about just having the flashy stuff, the, the key dangling, all that. Let's see, I read that one already. And then um, Vader using Force Lightning like in Episode 3 game. That is a game. So how you play and what is done isn't necessarily mean it's canon. Um, so, you know, there's abilities that are exaggerated. 
for for the sake of the fun of playing the game. So, but when you get into the lore, he can't he can't use force lightning. Um, I read Kenobi a while ago, such an expertly written book. I agree. Um, I've been going in chrono chronological order. Oh, crazy. Okay, yeah. So you're doing what Matt Wilkins is doing, right? For a year now, and only recently finished episode three. I'm currently on Imperial Commando. Awesome, awesome. I'd love to hear that. Enjoy your your adventure through Star Wars. That's amazing. Um, Clone Geek. Hey, what's up? Is it the rumor that they will have Clone Wars flashbacks? I don't know. There's all kinds of rumors. There's all kinds of rumors. And if they do, they do. Um, and I'll get to that here in, in a minute when we talk about the Kenobi, all the novels that has Kenobi story pertaining after or after um, Revenge of the Sith. And then let's see here. And there are Clone Wars flashbacks. Well, we we that's not fully confirmed yet, but that's going to be interesting if there is. And if it's Filoni, well, actually, it's Chow, but um, but we'll see. It, they are linking Rebels and all that together, so um, so we'll see what happens. Um, for Loni Wars, nothing makes sense, right? I agree. I agree. I wish James Lucino did more Star Wars books. I liked his Rogue One book. The um, Was it called Catalyst, I guess you could say? Is that the one? He is a great writer. He, um, I think that he learned a lot when he wrote under George Lucas. And, um, and so he has some understanding. So the books that I hear that are a lot more favorable are the ones that are from the, the writers who remained or at least got to write one more book before being um, casted out. I guess you can say, I'm not going to go read them, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it was, it was pretty good and it stayed with the lore, like how they were taught. Um, Soul Assassin, worst black pill ever. That's the spirit and knowing is half the battle, right? <laughs> right. And Robert, I think the force um, focused, or I think they focused too much on Vader and not as much on the Anakin that's truly behind the mask. Yeah, and that's the thing. So if I have a question for you guys again, I have all kinds of questions for you guys, all right? <laughs> Inquiring mind wants to know. All right. Uh, so, so if they give you a struggling Vader, and I think it's too late, 10 years, nine years past Revenge of the Sith, I think it's kind of too late to see the struggle. I mean, maybe there's going to be those little bits and pieces of him, Anakin, kind of coming to the surface a little tiny bit. But I think at this point, we should see a more, um, I wouldn't say brutal, but evil. No, I don't know if that's quite the word I'm looking for, but um, we should see Vader in his, all his anger and glory, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, Dark Lord, it made sense for him to have that transition of like, you know, Anakin is dead to me kind of thing because it was right after, right? Um, and then like that, like when I reviewed the teaser trailer, they had um, Obi-Wan saying, talking about as if it was events right after Revenge of the Sith, like we lost, the Jedi is gone, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this is 10 years after. We already know that. You don't need to tell us that. You and, and so are we now thinking that he's sitting on Tatooine sulking about the Jedi losing and that everything's gone now and blah, 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 blah. Um, I think it would have been better if it was closer to Revenge of the Sith with that kind of verbiage, verbiage from Obi-Wan. But that's just my thoughts. Um, Jedi, Padawan trailer. Okay, let me see. That's to her. Uh, my favorite Obi-Wan moment was the whole cat and mouse love game with Asajj Ventress. I don't remember there like being a love thing with her. I know that um, he had compassion for her because she used to be a Jedi Padawan. I didn't see the love thing. Um, and that he wasn't, and that compassion was, um, in his compassion, he basically was sending her back when he thought she was dead to Coruscant for a Jedi funeral. And then, you know, of course she tricked him. So who knows? Um, interesting. Okay, let me see here. OG Star Wars. 
I highly prefer you, your positive response in Disney Star Wars. Um, highlighting the EU, there is no black peeling involved. Well, that's I'm I'm a black peel according to some people. I think I just laugh at it. It's funny because this this person likes to label people, but then she gets so mad. This person, she gets so mad that um, she gets labeled. So I mean, I guess you can say hypocritical, hypocrite or something. I don't know, um, but that's okay. That's okay. It's just all fun and games, I guess. I don't know for that person. Um, I only, I'm only going to watch it through EFAPs. Oh yeah. It's um, episode by episode breakdown. I won't even go to, um, to the effort of pirating this schlock. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, EFAPs are fun to watch. Um, especially when you get someone on who's doing a type of EFAP that know the lore so they can point out stuff that maybe people who don't are not lore savvy, you know? Um, so Let's see here. And whoopsie. Hello there, Darmit McQuaid. How are you doing? And what are you enjoying in your mug today? What are you sipping on as we are engaging in coffee chat? The implications of the teaser trailer contradicts the lore. I seen a lot of that. <laughs> I pissed off a lot of people on Twitter. Not a lot, but there's a little tiny handful um, that are like, it doesn't break the lore. Like the one with Owen Lars and confronting the Inquisitor Reva or whatever her name is, confronting him. Um, that compromises it because um, if she if she's going up to him, you know, you know she's looking for Jedi. And she's suspecting him and knowing some Jedi and stuff that compromises the whole mission of protecting Luke on Tatooine with the Lars. So, you know, that's, I question that I do, I do. And, um, it doesn't have to say it specifically in a new hope or any of the movies, but we know that Luke is on with the Lars and that they're protecting them as well. So, Owen putting him in a such himself in a situation. So if he confronts the Inquisitor instead of her and confronting him, then um that makes that really shows that he's a cuck. I'm sorry. They they just really tore him down with that. Now if she goes up to question him about Jedi, that still compromises because were there no one there, he's not supposed to be known. The Lars are not supposed to be known in housing Luke. And we know that through a new hope because um like Vader doesn't even know about Luke. No one knows about Luke, really. Not even, um, you know, so, you know, so I, I stand with that. <clears throat> and then uh, Clone Geek. I just want Cody to be the main villain. <clears throat> wow, that's interesting. I never heard anybody say that. I think by this time, a lot of the clones should be, be being phased out. Unless like um, Cody and all of them are staying in to train the new stormtroopers. Um, Darth Lord, um, the rise of Darth Vader is a good at exploring about Vader adjusting everything. Yes, exactly. And Fatal J, what's up? Um, Obi Wan won't be the main star of the show. Yeah, I'm. I'm. That that's that's the what everybody's talking about, and I think that's that's the pattern we've been seeing with the, this Disney Star Wars faux lore. That's what I called it. That's what I'm calling it. Disney Star Wars full lore because it's it's not true to its own canon. It's not true to the established canon that George created. Even with the EU, it's not true to that. They they tossed it for their own creativity. Um, it's it's just it's enjoy it, but that's how I feel about it. Um, it'll be Reva, right? In fact, there's a part of the trailer that um shows Reva in this like alley. And then the figure with the blaster. Well, right before that, it's Obi-Wan hiding behind that pillar as they're having um, a shootout there. And and I think that's Obi-Wan facing her in that alley. I'm, I'm most positive that it is him. Um, so we'll see. Or, yeah, once we get the reviews and people start coming out the reviews, because I'm not watching it, but... The reviews and people's responses will, you know, I will see that. Um, there will always, um, they've always spent the Western tropes on Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett, right? Which I think that truly it's a missed opportunity for um, Obi Wan Kenobi show to do the same thing and at least follow the spirit of Kenobi novel and given that so that you know there's um, there's more consistency. Um, I like the Disney. Uh, I like that Disney used Inquisitors more than um, than the EU did. Um, I think the Inquisitors are Floney's thing. 
um, that's why you don't really see them. Um, it would be exceedingly dark seeing Darth Vader, uh, our Vader, an ex-slave. Oh, um, an ex-slave enslaving Wookiees. Oh, like um, from Dark Lord, you mean? I'm sorry if that, that I'm sorry if you're, that didn't text out right for you. I, I feel you. And Qui-Gon Jinn tells Obi-Wan that Vader would never um, go on Tatooine, right? Because in fear of awakening the very essence of Anakin and um, his mom's there, his mom died there, he grew up there. There's a lot of things that awaken up Anakin. And that's the clip I'm going to be putting up today is a part of um, his his talk with Obi or Qui-Gon and Kenobi wanting to run away with Luke, thinking that they're not going to be safe on Tatooine. He will literally, if, if if he feels that they're compromised, and this is the EU, he literally will, he will, he is ready to grab Luke and take him somewhere else. Um, so that that's, so having him, seeing things go down with how he's reacting in, um, going to react in Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi series, I, it's not making sense to me. So we'll see. They will rewrite the PT with flashbacks like they did the TCW's last season, right? And then Catalyst is on um, also on my shelf. Isn't Catalyst the Disney Star Wars one too, right? Um, I'm enjoying Kenobi. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's get out of this crazy mess here of this article. And let's get into the reading order. And first of all, I'm going to grab the super chat and then I'll go back to the chats and interact with you guys. But Slimer Snarf, thank you so much. Um, thanks for all your help, opinions and info about the EU. Keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. This is what predominantly what this channel is about, but I thought it was very important to discuss a little bit about this Kenobi series coming out and, um, and have that discussion here. And again, those of you who are going to watch it, enjoy, have fun. Have at it. You know, I myself can't tell you what you want to enjoy and stuff. That's all up to you. Um, you know, so enjoy. Enjoy. I'm not going to watch it. Um, they probably, um, they will probably Ahsoka. Seriously, Filoni will add her in everything. And her being in episode three adds more, um, her not being in episode three adds more questions. Yeah. I'm guessing that's what you're alluding to there. Um Let's see here. They will probably, oh wait, oh, that didn't work out very well. All right. Kenobi and Ventress, guess he had a type of angry ball tattooed <laughs> lady. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here. And I'm, I love that we can do like little presentation slider, sliding um, slides for um, live streams now through um, StreamYard. So I'm very excited about this. So this is the this is the first book, you know, after Revenge of the Sith that gives a glimpse of what's going on with Obi Wan Kenobi, how he flees with Luke, how he has to adjust on Tatooine, how it's hard for him not to be involved like a Jedi, and um, and it gets, has a lot of great perspectives in there, how um, how he responds with everyday life, and um, interacts with people. It's a very very good book. John Jackson Miller did a great job in creating this um, standalone novel for Kenobi on Tatooine. Um, he's not worried about leaving. He is basically the Jedi, the true Jedi, where he's given a mission, he's going to stay on task. And that's what Kenobi is, Obi-Wan is, Kenobi is all about. We also get his transition from Obi-Wan to Ben Kenobi. Because he does have to change his name, right? Because um, he he's wanted. He's a wanted man. He's a wanted man. And so Kenobi, we find out, is a name that last name that is used throughout the galaxy. Not not like Smith or something in um, in our real life. But there are people that has na um, last names or surnames or whatever you want to call them that sound like Keno or yeah Kenobi. And um, so that was OK for him to keep. And, you know, he, we have his interaction with um, um, Oren Golt, um, how he betrays um, Annalene. Annalene, you know, is attracted to um, Ken Kenobi or Ben, but he can't have that. He does think about um, Sari Tachi 
And of course, said Satine, which I didn't care for. I don't, I don't care for Satine. I don't care for that arc right there. Um, but that's me. Um, and then what else? So it has all of that. It has all of that, that in there. And even him revealing himself as a Jedi towards the end. And, and what happens um, to um, how he, I want to say get rid of, but how he has people, how he helps Adeline find her true path because her staying on Tatooine compromises not only herself in a situation, I'm not going to try to give too much spoilers, but also compromises his mission. So he finds a way to send her off to Alderaan and um, for for some studies on xenophobic, you know, um, xenophobic, um, xeno, xenology or learning about different species and um, all that. And so it's very interesting how he does that. But one critical thing that caught my attention is Bail Organa did give him a data pad to communicate with him, right? He decides that if he tries to communicate with him in any way, except for that one instance of sending Annalene off, um, that it would compromise, that it could get, could, you know, get hacked, the Empire could find him. And so he chooses not to use it and chooses not to communicate with Bail Organa whatsoever so that it doesn't compromise in any way his mission. He So that is something very key and critical to Obi-Wan's character. And I think that Disney Star Wars full lore is going to compromise that as well. I don't think that they understand his character. I think that this Kenobi book um, lends us um, an insight to how even maybe George seen Obi-Wan Kenobi as well. Um, I have to go in and research this book some more regarding that because we know towards the end um, of his ownership, I guess you can say before he sold it, he started stepping away from Star Wars a lot. We know that already. Um, but it just, it does give us an insight in how, you know, they, that pre-Disney lore and, and the company wanted Obi-Wan to be seen. And I've seen that Disney Star Wars full lore does the opposite to that, does the opposite. Um, I think Obi-Wan finds a romance on Tatooine. His orders, his orders rules of no attachments are tossed to the wind at the point in the timeline. Um, are you talking about Disney Star Wars? Because in, um, in the original lore, he does away with, with Annalene. He sticks on the mission. He doesn't need any other distractions. And I, I don't say he does away with her like he murders her. He sends her off. He sends her off. <laughs> Let's see here. And such as Anna, I don't know what that was about. Sorry. Let's see here. Most of these Disney comics and books feel like filler. Okay. All right. I like that they use the same actor for Owen Lars. Yeah, I, I give them credit. I give them credit for that. Um, they're bringing back the previous actors and actresses. But the thing is, like, even my Al Stan, Kenobi should look older in the series because it's 10 years after. I feel the same way with from what we've seen with Owen Lars. He should look a lot older, too, because you, you were coming up so close to A New Hope now. There should be some signs of wear and tear from the climates, the, the, um, the climate and twin suns of Tatooine. So let's see here. And the EU Cody was one of the very last original Django clones still remaining with the Empire. Mm -hmm. And I think he helps with the training and stuff, I believe, um, you know, and the transition from clones into, you know, um, norm, you know, human like non clone um, troopers. Cody would be training new Imperial troops according to the Force Unleashed. Yep. He hates the new guys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so we'll see what happens. Are they going to keep true to that? Probably not. Probably not. That's that's just their what we their pattern we see. I'm betting on Ahsoka showing up. <laughs> yep. Let's see here. Full Laura presents where on Tatooine is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, 
I'm not going to watch it either. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit further here because I know we have a lot of conversation to get through. But I'm going to go ahead and change this one here. So I know some of you guys said you read this already. And if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, I would say keep an open mind, read that so that you can further assess if you know which side you want to be on. I mean, there, I mean, I'm not saying choose sides when it comes to what you want to enjoy, but generally it's like doing your research, which one is better, which one fully understands Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I still stand, I still stand that it's pre Disney George Lucas era of Star Wars that understands the lore better than the stuff that's coming out today. But that's me. Um, um, yeah, that canon. Okay, let's see here. And Inquisitor's just a um, Cenobite skin or Cenobite skin for that and Emperor's hand. Um, let's see here. So let me go ahead and move on from this. But if you guys want to share any, if you, the ones who read, listen to this, and it's unabridged on Audible, um, share with me your favorite moments in here. Um it could be his interaction with Annalene. It could be how he, um, what he did when Owen or um, Oren um, Galt goes to um, talk with um, Jabba in, um, and what happens there, you know, or whatever it is, you know, just are the, the crate fights, whatever it is, let me know. Um, Vader has already set foot on Tatooine in the new Marvel comics so much for Qui-Gon's word. I know. I know. I remember people talking about that when it was revealed and um, <laughs> no pun intended, but I think that's a misstep. <laughs> I do. I think it's a misstep. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Enjoying the show. Please become a channel member and support it. Thank you so much. So awesome. Thank you, my homie. All right. Um, I like Ahsoka in Clone Wars, but sick of her in Disney garbage. Yeah, I mean, I think she's overused. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, let's see. I saw it to not just a Jedi, but an in interact like a general in a war, always fighting. He's trying not to find action anymore like he had with Anakin in the Clone Wars era and how Jedi respond, right? Um, so it, that that's the most difficult thing I think we should see or whoever's going to watch the show. I'm, I'm talking as if I am and all of you guys are going to watch it or we're going to watch it together. But I think that's the thing that they should reveal um, is him still trying not to respond like a Jedi and to be just a common man. Because we know Jedis aren't common people whether no matter what species they are, they're not common. They're not common whatsoever. Um, it's probably going to be more about the female inquisitor going good. I don't know. I mean, I, I see everybody saying that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to watch Raging Rhino, Rhino reviews, laugh out loud. Cheers to that. He did have his little small review on, um, on the teaser trailer. I watched that this morning when I got up. Um, he wasn't impressed whatsoever. I mean, the look on his face, he's like, really? Okay. You know, so that was interesting. <laughs> Let's see here. The Kenobi audible audio book used to be in the, in YouTube. Now it's gone. Lame. Oh, really? Wow. I, I wouldn't doubt that the company took it down because of what's going to happen here. Um, you know, the series coming out. In the EU, the Jedi were ten thousands, or were ten thousand in the prequel era. I think only two hundred survived in the initial purge. After the purge died down, only sixty to seven survived, and barely one percent. Yeah, and the thing is that the survivors they basically gave everything up and um, and ceased to be living like a Jedi, or became like um, or worked undercover, but not like a Jedi. I guess you can say. And so it doesn't really compromise what Yoda said about Luke being the only one, because a lot of them weren't um, even being or even um, living the Jedi life, I guess you could say. Um, you know, we got to I wanted to do a video like I thought about that like half a year ago. I'm like, I need to talk about these Jedi that remain in the EU. And um, a lot of them are also in the games, which died off and stuff. And, you know, and so we know games are not everything in the games is not canon as well. So 
let's see here. The last thing I watched was Visions. That was because it was supposed to be nothing about the Diz, Diz timeline. <laughs> the Diz, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have no intention of seeing them destroy Kenobi. No, no, neither do I. Um, I stopped watching Disney Star Wars a long time ago. I'm content with the real canon. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Check out Raging Rhino's review. Yes. So go ahead. After we're done here, go check it out. Um, the Inquisitors don't know much about them. Question did, um, question did Darth Vader just have them do his bidding or did he hunt Jedi himself? Asking because I would figure Vader decides that um, what happens. Well, they're supposed to they're supposed to answer to Vader. That that's what I that's what I'm guessing. But when you look into the lore, the original lore, they had they had their dark side acolytes before the Inquisitors became a thing. And they helped with Vader hunting down the Jedi. Um, we know from the Dark Lord Rise of Darth Vader novel that eventually um, Palpatine says, forget about them foolish Jedi now. You know, especially Obi Wan Kenobi. Forget about Kenobi. Let him atone, just like the Sith had atoned for a thousand years, and that was even, I think, in the Revenge of the Sith novel. So that's very, pretty much consistent. Forget about them; they're not important to us anymore. They're gone, and um, yeah. So he did, even especially in the beginning of the Purge, hunt them down. There's a great scene on Kashyyyk in Dark Lord: Rise of Darth Vader, and also him hunting the Jedi in that novel. Um, but as time goes along, I think that that per, the pursuit, you know, started lessening um, and it wasn't very frequent. So I don't know what they're going to do with this. I can't really, I really don't know. Now it looks like he's just having them hunt them down for him, which kind of takes the excitement out about Vader hunting them down. I don't know. Um, Hey, real Kim Shady. How are you doing? Sorry I'm late. Haha. Ha. I saw the trailer and it's just straight nostalgia bait. It doesn't even hold my interest right. It doesn't whatsoever. And I, I, I kind of like compared and contrast it and picked it apart a little bit pertaining to the books and stuff. So let's go ahead and go on to the next book. I'm like just chatting away here. All right. So this is the last of the Jedi. This is from the Scholastic. Um, and it's a nine book series, I think. I could be wrong. I didn't count them. I have the whole series, but I didn't count them. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just vague. It's a, it's a vague answer. Um, so don't quote me on that. It could be a little bit less or more. Um, this first, this is the first two of the series. Yeah, you see Obi Wan here. Now everybody's questioning um, about. Um, well, it never. They never say in the movies or what have you that. Obi-Wan can't leave his exile. Um, my answer to that, for those who are saying that, because it feels like these fans need every single thing spoon-fed to them verbally. It's about the context, right? So Revenge of the Sith, you know, they are, their mission, Obi-Wan, then also, you know, um, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Bell, their mission is to protect these kids, right? Because they don't want the Dark Lords, the Sith, to get a hold of them because of how strong the force is in the Skywalker family, right? And so we know that Yoda and Obi-Wan go into exile, and um, Bell Organa takes Leia as his own back to Alderaan. And we know where Luke ends up with the Lars. And so we have these individuals have these missions, right? But the most important mission is for Obi-Wan and Yoda to stay hidden, to not get involved in what's going on in the galaxy, because that compromises their plan of keeping the Jedi intact. Because as long as him and Yoda, Obi-Wan and Yoda, remain alive the jedi are still alive right and um, because they are masters and um so their mission is to then when the time is right to train 
the kids, you know, and they refer to Luke, but in Revenge of the Sith novels, you know, Yoda says that the twins basically will be, you know, will, um, will create the new Jedi order. And um, we know who does, we know that Luke does it and Leia eventually becomes a part of, becomes a Jedi. And her arc is very great as well as in, in her transition from being um, a politician to a Jedi. And, um, and so we know that they're, that's their mission. So we know that they really can't leave their mission. Their mission is to stay in exile. Their mission is to protect. Their mission is to stay out of the um, out of the light of the of the empire, staying away from the empire, not being noticed, not being seen. And um, that is the context of that. These fans that are now fighting against, or you know, trying to. Um, rebuttal against that saying oh it's not shared it's not spoken in the movies that they can't leave no it's not but there has to be a really 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 good reason for them to break exile and compromise their mission and so this is where these books come from the last of the jedi it's about two within two years after obi-wan kenobi's exile and um ferris olsen is a a jedi that survived um Order 66, and he basically gives up the Jedi way. He becomes very disillusioned with the Jedi. He goes into hiding. There's a lot of depth going on in these two novels here, these two books here. And um, Obi-Wan's called into action. He communes with Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon reassures him that he needs to go because if there's any evidence left on Polis Masa about the twins' birth, that compromises everything. And so he has to leave to go make sure that any evidence, any type of little bit of evidence, and it, it goes into details, what could possibly have been left, um, you know, that he has to go take care of that so their mission isn't compromised, so the twins aren't found out. Now, I think this is well done for this, um, this, this um, young reader's novels here with the the focus on Obi-Wan leaving when he does. And this is again, within within two years of his exile, he goes and takes care of it. He returns, he stays in exile. That's it. This is not 10 years after. This is not 11 or nine years after. This is basically soon after, if you want to say two years, within two years is soon after. And um, this is all about him keeping to his mission, making sure that they stay hidden, that the twins birth stay hidden. This is very important. I think this is a very important aspect of why he needs to leave. Now, in the Kenobi series, if he leaves to go protect Leia because she's getting kidnapped or whatever, to me, that shares that Bell Organa failed to protect her, failed to keep her out of the, keep her, um, keep her protected, basically. Um, and I think that compromises that 10 years after, um, we should know that Bell is already competent, competent, competent enough and competent, or well, I can't even talk, um, to take, you know, to protect her, um, and her, you know, not being revealed as being any inkling to being the daughter of Vader, right? Um, so, you know, so I think I, I just I just feel it's a huge, 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 huge misstep on that. So these novels here, I think, are really, really great tie in to giving us an off world adventure for Obi-Wan Kenobi within the two years, making sure everything's resolved and that their tracks are covered. And I think that if you guys can find them, um, go to maybe thrift um, thriftbooks.com. You might be able to find them there thriftbooks.com. You might find them there for cheap. Um, they're worth the read if you want to explore what's going on with Obi-Wan post Revenge of the Sith. And if you want to see him go off world and what happens, I highly recommend these books. Now, what do you guys think about him leaving and the world, Tatooine, so late in the game? considering that he's a type of Jedi that keeps his mission and at this point should be well established on Tatooine and um, all of that. So what do you guys think about that? Hollow net. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Let's see here. I'll go back. 
if Disney fans spent more time reading the books for, uh, or the Wikipedia than whining on Twitter, the world would be a better place. They don't want to. They just want to get mad because you're critiquing and you're comparing and contrasting and sharing how much it breaks, it contradicts, and it doesn't make sense. Um, they'd rather sit do, sit on that hill defending something that they don't understand. That's how I see that. Um, years after the Jedi die off, a dude in Outer Rim me, mines for crystals to um, remake sabers to um, to rebirth the Jedi. Bad summary, but worthy watch. Oh, I don't know. I think you're talking about a fan fan um, film. Um, the real came shady. Don't forget that this is Disney Star Wars. So like a um, bajillion Jedi survived the purge compared to prior canon, right? <laughs> and then the who point the whole point is that they're trying to keep a low profile so low that's almost non-existent. Correct. Correct. And um in this he does um bump into, you know, um he does get compromised a little bit. Um, I, like I said, I recommend that you read it. I'm not going to spoil any more of that. I hear this. I hear that soul. How strong the force is in the Skywalker family, not the Palpatine family. Right, right. And then uh, let's see here. Um, so let's go on to the next one here. So this one right here, this one, the life and legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi is another worthy one from Schoolastics to pick up because it's basically almost like a journal he leaves for Luke Skywalker. And um and it he, he talks about Asajj Ventress in here. He talks about what happens in the Clone Wars a bit. Does it and it still leaves questions for Luke because we know when we read through Luke's arc post Return of the Jedi, there's a lot of questions about the Clone Wars that he hasn't got resolved at all. Um so he does share experiences from the Clone Wars, but he doesn't go into depth of the Clone Wars. And um, so I think it's a really good read. It also goes about on how he leaves a um, a well-coded um, like um, chest for Luke at his home where it's his own force abilities and stuff like that, that he uses to open it up. And if anybody else tries to, it, the, every, the contents gets destroyed. And he leaves a journal, a training journal in there for Luke. So he leaves it there, how to construct a light, lightsaber, a lot of like a lot of information Luke needs to know about, including his um, his time as a general in the Clone Wars, all of that. And, um, you know, so I'm just I think he doesn't say at all anything about Padme, which I think was a misstep. I think we I think that they should have. He should have. But. Um, the Darkness Trilogy came out before this, so they couldn't write it in. So that was a missed opportunity right there. Um, I think if the books or the, the trilogy and this book were written, and I'm, I'm guessing their timeline, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, then it's still a missed opportunity for him to reveal who his mom is to Luke Skywalker. And um, so this is another worthy one because we get into what's going on with Obi-Wan's mind. We get into his focus on training Luke. And if something happens to him, like he dies of old age or what have you, that Luke has, you know, a journal to help him progress in his training and stuff. So I think this is a really good read here and a good pickup. So I would um, highly recommend you guys to also add this to your shelf. And um, and the rise and the rise and fall of Darth Vader, I think, is another one that complements this as well. I think I got the title wrong. I'm not sure. Um yeah, so this is another one. I was saying, unless Obi Wan catches up with Hollow Net News, how would he know Leia is got kidnapped? Um, I guess watch the show, find out. I guess I don't know. Um, let's see here. My bad. I was answering a question about Ninth Jedi episode from the Vision series. Oh, okay, all right. So I never watched that, so I misunderstood, and I apologize. And um, according to the book, Kenobi had a home as soon as he settled on Tatooine. Point exactly. The whole living in a cave 10 years after arriving is wrong and insulting for him. Right. Yeah, and I didn't understand why they decided to go that route. They should have showed that he's already established in his home in the Jinlin Wastes. Um, I don't know. It seems like everything that pre-Disney did, they drew in the opposite of that. And I will stand behind that in time immemorial because that's the pattern I'm noticing. I have 27 wonderful souls here 
please hit the like button and come in and ask any questions about <clears throat> what we're discussing here and share anything about Kenobi that you liked. And um, let's keep this conversation going. Let's see here. Um, and stop it. You're making my my reading list grow faster than I can clear it. <laughs> Good. You could buy it and it could be next on your reading order. So that's the whole point here. That's the whole point um, is to do that. <laughs> is to do that is I want to encourage you guys to pick up these novels and read. Um, this is where the heart of Star Wars is. So I, I encourage you guys highly to pick these up and read um, that thrift store, that thriftbooks.com. You, so you can find all kinds of um, cool Star Wars stuff there, like the essential readers guide, um, you know, the essential books on the vessels and stuff. And I got that title wrong, but, um, <clears throat> and then you can find the, the little series that are not being sold anymore, or reprinted anymore. So just go in there and explore. There's a lot of good stuff there that you can find. And it's not going to cost as an arm and a leg as on eBay or Amazon as well. And can't confirm that I am a wonderful soul, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I, I will I well, I will say you are, okay? I, I I have faith you are. And thank you, Abu Nas, for the five dollar super chat. Finally here on lunch now. So I'll be listening in while I'm fixing my food. I see you're scorching the earth with Obi-Wan he he. Anyways, love my EU elitist, right? I gotta get that clip from um open airlock policy, the EU elitist clip there. I think it's fun. And that would be fun to use here. All right. Let's see here. And I think that's the last one here on this. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. Yay, we get to get into this one. I'm so excited about this one. Okay. This is the next one. And these are in reading order that I shared. So starting back with that one. This is about within two years after the Kenobi novel. And this right here, I would place right after that because he leaves um, Luke the journal. This is this is all him pertaining to Luke and his past and all that. So I place that here. Um, and then, of course, Legacy Comics, which is 137 plus years after, um, you know, after Crucible, I believe, or something. Um, so there's a big time gap there. And we get into Kate Skywalker and the Skywalker Descendants. And this is a flashback of Obi-Wan and Asherod Hetz. And um, I think it's a great story. Um, I'm guessing that this event, <clears throat> this flashback, <clears throat> this account happened after the Kenobi novel. I'm guessing. Because we know the talk with Ayark. And how she talks about Sherrod Het, and um, you know Obi Wan comes to terms with okay, Ash, you know Sherrod Het is the one that made them strengthen the Tuscans um, and all this other stuff, and then um, then he kind of puts two and two together from my what I got in the Kenobi novel about what happened with the slaughter of the Tuscan tribe and who could be responsible for it. So that is that is also um, I, I think that you know, Obi-Wan came to terms on figuring out what happened and how Anakin was involved with that. So, um, <clears throat> so that's very interesting. Now this is way in the future. And this, we have Darth Krait, which is all Sherrod Het. Um, he's put into a stasis. He does get tortured like Jason Solo does by the Vong. There's a nice little history going on. I highly re recommend, you know, studying or researching Asherod Het's background leading up to this. It also is it's also part of Legacy of the Force, even though it doesn't directly say um, it is him that um, begins the One Sith, and that is also shown in Legacy of the Force as well. And um, so we have a lot of tie-ins all the way from the PT all the way into Legacy era. <clears throat> Great storyline for Asherod Het and his... Um, his effect on the galaxy, whether positive, good or bad. So this is worth the read. So I'm going to go ahead and bring, bring this comic up here and we're going to get into it. I am so excited. Now I, you know, it's hard to do these comic series without a co-host or without a special guest or someone, you know, getting into or helping with the chat. So we're not going to, I'm not going to read the whole, um, comic for this 
um, the scene here, but I will get into Obi-Wan Kenobi's and um, Asherad Darth Crate's interaction. So let's do this. So let's share, share screen, da, 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 and window, and here we go. So I'm super excited about this. And again, this is Star Wars Legacy number 16. Um, we have the aging Kenobi here um, as well. And I think this picture really does well in showing that he's aging. Like I said, this happens after Kenobi. I don't know how far I have to take a look. I didn't research it. I should have done it last night, but I stayed up late last night going through some insider uh, magazines that I had saved on my computer and just, just nerding out on those. And I'm like, oh crap, it's one. I have to go to bed. So here we go. And um, so this is uh, Morgan. Um, um, Morgan, this is um, Kate Skywalker's mom. And then, of course, um, if you guys haven't read the, these comics, I highly recommend it. Even we're not going to get into what's going on here. Um, but here is just a little history here. So we have Morgan. We have um, Kate, little Kate Skywalker and his father, Cole, right here. And um, she didn't want to give up her career, her lifestyle in with the Imperials as a spy or an intelligent agent. And, um, and he is a Jedi master. And so she chooses to step away from her family. That's in short. I recommend reading the series to find out more about what's going on with that. So we have Dark, Dark, Darth Crate here. And... Um, you know, he's talking here. I have mastered uh, mastered Sith techniques for prolonging life and ha um, have spent time in sta um, stasis. So basically what I told you, he was in stasis and stuff. In the last days of the Republic, like all the Jedi, I was general in the Clone War. So here we're going into some history. I have served with the um, sire of your line, Anakin Skywalker. I discovered truths about him that, had they been known, would have gotten the Skywalker casted out of the order. Instead, I kept silent, leaving it to his conscience to atone. And so basically, if you know the history between him and Anakin, Anakin does confess to him that he is the one that killed the Tuscan tribe and all this other stuff. Uh, a mistake, as it turns out, turned out how much blood and pain could have been avoided if I had spoken. So he's saying if I would have spoken up, maybe, we, you know, the Jedi wouldn't have fallen, blah, 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 blah. Still doesn't play any green apprentice knows the histories. All the Jedi were wiped out at the end of the Clone Wars. Order 66 went down and their own troops um, slagged them. Slag them. Your master has neglected your education. Do you not know the names of Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi? I do. And now, mind you, this is like, what, 200 plus? This is like 200 years plus from Order 66. And so that's a long time. Well, 200? Maybe not. Maybe with under 200. I may be exaggerating on that. It's under 200, but still. I was um, scouting apart from my troops when order 66 was issued commanding the clones to kill the jedi generals so he's given his account back during that time i saw another jedi slain i killed the clones assigned to execute saying only or yeah saying only one long enough or saving one only long enough to learn why then i fled the planet the jedi calm channels were silent i reached out through the force but could not sense any other jedi a light had gone out in the galaxy and was and i was alone the jedi purge as it became known was extraordinarily effective i made my way to tatooine and became war leader so he's he's going he's he's marrying his dad here because sharad het was a war leader as we know from the Kenobi novel, of several clans of Tuscan raiders, as my father had been before me. Settlers, um, settlers and moisture farmers had been stealing the Tuscan land and water for years, driving my people further into the Junlin Waste. Under my command, 
the Tuscans were once again a feared and potent fighter fighting force, reclaiming what was rightfully ours. Then one day, it was a little moisture farm near the part the port of the Moss Isley, a plot claimed by a husband and a wife when all the sand belonged to the Tuscans. So I, mean, I wonder what place he's talking about. Look at that. I wonder what place he's talking about. And so we have Obi-Wan here and um, Obi-Wan's near, um, you know, right there at the farm. You could see his cloak there. He's looking and you see him riding up on the bath as the Tuscans and led by Ashrod Het riding up. And then, um, and then he says, tribesmen, wait here. And so Kenobi's looking up at him and then he gets down and he's standing, you know, him and Kenobi are standing face to face. Master Het, the force, um, the force um, be with you, Master Kenobi. So you too survived the order or order 66. I thought I was alone. What brings you to Tatooine, let alone these trackless wastes, um, wastes, yeah, that's what he says. And then he goes on to say, or Obi-Wan says, you do, Master Het. You lead these Tuscans as their warlord, not something a Jedi would do. So, of course, he doesn't give up anything about why he's truly there. And then um, Asherah Het says, do not lecture me, Obi-Wan. We were both generals in the Clone Wars, warlords for a republic that turned on us. The Tuscans have been hunted and killed by both settlers and farmers. Jedi defend those who need help. Sometimes you defend life by taking the life of the aggressor. And so Obi-Wan responds here. Past mistakes do not justify current ones. The danger is in becoming what you fight. Um, what you fight. It was the trap that the Jedi fell into. It is the trap that takes you now. I It must stop. You must see that Asherah Het. And so he responds to Obi-Wan with, I do not. I was raised to manhunt amongst the Tuscans by my father, Sherrod Het, the greatest Jedi of his age. He taught me to think and act as a Tuscan. These are my people. Will the settlers stop killing Tuscans? Then blood calls for blood. <clears throat> the settlers will be forced to abandon land or be, or be buried in it. So we see this. We see we see the different, we see the Tuscans. They are fighting for their land. I think this is well done. I think this is done better than what we've seen in the book of Boba Fett. Honestly, that's what I think. And it also shares how brutal they are. They don't care about living side by side with people, right? Um, they don't care. They don't like the fact that water's being farmed from the sky. That's blasphemy to them. Um, and so they're fighting between, they're fighting for these lands. Um, there's a whole lot of chaos going along, um, going still. Um, basically, if you look into the history of the Tuscan Raiders, they don't even like Jawas. They don't like, they, they feel superior to everyone else. And I think people fail to recognize that when it came to the book of Boba Fett. And then Obi-Wan says, I cannot permit that. You were a great Jedi, Het, and the son of a great Jedi, but you have given yourself over to revenge. It stops here. And so they commence to fight. Both lightsabers are ignited. You will have a Jedi funeral, Master Kenobi, that I promise. And then so they commence to fight here. I think this is really, you know, really good little um, flashback on what happens. And of course, they use the force, you know, everything happens here, you know, um, it's all self-explanatory self here. So let's keep going. And the fight still continues. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, so it still continues. The twin sons, I like that little image here of the twin sons and them fighting and the battle looking at them. And so here we go. He basically <laughs> cuts off his arm, right? So here we go. He cuts off his arm. Asherah takes off his mask or his mask or he takes off his mask too. So if you know the Tuscan lore, revealing your face is a no. You do not reveal your face, right? And if you lose an arm, 
you're no longer a part of the tribe. You're no longer useful. So we're going to get into this. I am finished. You have disgraced me before my people. With one hand, I can no longer wield a Gaddafi, Gaddafi stick. I am now on an outcast among the Tuscans. I am a dead man. Finish it. Kill me. And then Obi-Wan says, no, but you can no longer stay on Tatooine. You must leave and give your word by your father's honor to never return. Swear it. And he goes, I so swear. The Tuscans were once your people, but so were the Jedi. You have forgotten our ways. Perhaps with meditation, you will remind them, remember them and yourself. He goes on to say, I hope you will. May the force be with you, uh, Sherrod Het. And then now we get back to the present. He's telling um, Kate Skywalker the story. Um, decades later, I learned that very moisture farm had concealed Anakin Skywalker's son, and that Anakin Skywalker, a Darth, um, and that Anakin Skywalker as Darth Vader had turned Sith and destroyed the Jedi Order. That the righteous Obi Wan Kenobi failed to share with me. And then I like um, Kate Skywalker's remark here. So that puts the Skywalker's what two up on you, you spiny Marglack. So yeah, there we go. So there is something that I recommend you get, you find these comics and you get into these comics here. This is great, um, you know, Obi-Wan lore. I think it's very consistent to what, um, what we see in the lore and um, how Obi-Wan handles things that keeps him from being known and he sends them away. And um, he doesn't necessarily, he doesn't leave tattooing after that one mission to protect the twins, to make sure that they're not discovered, um, that he's committed. He is committed. And yeah, I see Soul Assassin telling. <laughs> yep, there she is, right? And I think that is very consistent to exactly what the canon established for Obi-Wan Kenobi, the canon. Star Wars, Disney Star Wars is in name only. It's not the canon. It's not canon because George Lucas is not involved or proving what have you. Um, Kate Skywalker got laid. <laughs> Delilah Blue, I'm going to need a minute to catch my breath. Yeah, she. I. I th this is fun. We, we are way ahead in the Star Wars lore here, you know, like decades you know like years ahead and so we see see star wars in more of a modern term and the evolution here and i think it was well done um by jan and everybody who contribute to these comics yes 137 years aby so yeah 137 130 138 was the end of the purge that darth um crate did against the jedi i did do a quiz and in fact speaking of polls i need to look up the the one on um that way have today so that we can go into that so let me pull that up here real quick Let's that way have to there we go um let it refresh so far leia is in the lead with 38 percent mara jade let me see here open up for me please mara jade is 36 Padme 15% and Shmi Skywalker 11%. And thank you guys for, I, I debated on putting Shmi in there, but she's the very first Skywalker that we know of. And so I thought that would have been, a, you know, I thought just to pay homage to her that we'd do that, that I would do that. Let's see here what's going on in the chat. The Legacy Comics was bold step in Star Wars going far in the future. I wonder if the sequel trilogy should have gone that direction uh, so as to not ruin the accomplishments of the OT heroes. They That's what people have debated. And I've seen that before, that they should have skipped ahead. Um, let's see here. My bat, my are two bad guys alive due to Obi-Wan only doing half measures. Let's see here. Legacy is dope. They had it all already. Yeah. And that's the thing is like in, in Dark Lord, Rise of Darth Vader, when he's communing at the end, the epilogue, when he's communing with um, Qui-Gon, he asks if he should have killed, went back and made sure Anakin was dead. 
that that's one thing that has been in his mind. Should I have made sure he died? Should I have made sure he died? And um, Qui-Gon says, you know, it's it's up, you know, this is let the force, it's the will of the force, basically. And that's that's basic talk for Qui-Gon, right? It's the will of force. The force will decide his fate. His fate is not finished yet. His his destiny is not finished yet. So um, so I thought that was very interesting as well. Let's see here. But for Asherad, he probably should have killed him too. But and that sets, like I said, it sets up stuff that happens in Legacy. And later on, because of Jason's um, attempt for things not to happen the way um, that he foreseen, and again, the, the 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 visions of the future is always in motion. It's not accurate. You're going to get various um, various um, examples of the future, and that's been eluded in the OT and throughout the whole lore. And so when Jason responds, Jason solo responds to his visions of the future, it sets him on the course for him to become Darth Cadus. And he's trying to fight. He's trying to not have Darth Crate come to light. Well, he still does. He still does, but years later. So he hasn't permitted it or stopped it. Sorry, permit means making it. Um, he hasn't stopped it. But he pro he he prolonged it a little bit. He in um for the sake of his daughter, I guess you could say. I don't know. I don't know. I I you know. So that's up to you guys to feel like it just did Jason's actions really help out anything, or did it just compromise the future for his um for um the future generations of the Skywalkers and stuff? Not you know. So that's a lot of things, a little new nu nuances to think about. Um, I also think Lucas had a thing for females, Twi'leks, right? I, I think so too, because he's he was attracted to Darth Talon as well. He loves Ayla. He he loved her so much he brought her into the into the movies, right? So that that's very interesting and very good point there. Very good point. And um, so let's see here. So I am going to have that EU clip up here by maybe an hour or two after the show so stay tuned it's going to be part of the epilogue of dark lord rise of darth vader um with i didn't know i don't ex exactly know which part because it's only going to be a minute or under a minute so i don't know which part i might do a few and part one part two part three who knows but that's going to come so i want you guys to go check that out because it'll also give you a bigger perspective on what's going on in obi-wan's head pertaining to if he should flee with Luke, what he should do, the circumstances, him staying on Tatooine, him as a Jedi. You know, so I think that that is something that I need to keep in front of you guys here today. And um, I wish there's a way that I can post stuff like this, like legacy comics. I wish there's a way it could be on Audible, but it's not. So sharing it here with you is my way of getting it in front of you here. And so what'd you guys think about this bit of lore here with Asherod Het and Obi-Wan Kenobi? Um, did you think that it was a nice little, nice little, um, cause it goes, it ties in all continuity, like I said, but then also it gives us another light, another glimpse into what Obi-Wan mission was on Tatooine, how he stayed focused and how, if anything came to him and compromised, he, got rid of it you know like annaline he sent her off to you know study um species and different worlds and stuff like that with asherad het he basically humiliated him in front of his tuscan people right and took off his mask exposed who he is and if you read the kenobi novel once you reveal your face and there's a twin sons lore with that that um it's it's kind of like voodoo i guess you can say um you know, so he did that. And so he sent Asherod Het off instead of killing him because he's such a Jedi. And I think that's what the fault of Obi-Wan Kenobi is, is that his fault as being a Jedi is that he's trained not to take life unless unless necessary. And I don't think he thought it was necessary. So I thought that was an interesting arc there. I thought it was great. And Kenobi novel, I flesh, um, fleshed out the Tuscans so much. They did. It's such, and I've used that to compare and contrast and discuss the, the book of Boba Fett as well. I think Kenobi did it a lot better than what they are trying to present in the book of Boba Fett. I think there's a lot more of like the diversity type thing that they were trying to push. So people are like, oh, this is woke. This is this, this is that. Not necessarily, but their approach was to, um, but how people also seen it 
related to my people, Native Americans and stuff like that. I think that's where it kind of veered off to. So um, let's see here. And retroactively gives more depth to our um, Asherad and his father, right? It does. Great continuity, consistency and continuity. Great consistency. As of now, I don't see that with Disney Star Wars. There are some, I do give credit where credit's due. Doesn't mean I'm going to go and read it, watch it, whatever. No. Um, but more often than none, they can't eat. Floney can't even keep up his own consistency within the stuff he's written and produced and brought out through animation. Um, seeing what I thought was a Tuscan fighter with a lightsaber is why I look, I took home the comic, right? That I know it's really neat, huh? It's really, really good. Um, they did make radio dramas for dark empire, crimson empire. That's right. I do have the radio dramas for dark empire and I forgot, sorry. Um, but I do have the dark empire radio, um, radio drama. I don't have the crimson, crimson empire tales of the Jedi. I don't have that one either. And dark force trilogy. Um, yeah, I, I think Steve Kenobi has a Dark Force trilogy. Um, his that is more or less a novella, novella or whatever. So small novels more than comics. Um, the Dark Force trilogy. Um, love it. And Obi Wan looks like he spent years on Tatooine. And I'm guessing that's not even like what five within five years, maybe six years of exile. Fook Norris, good afternoon, OG and chat. Well, good afternoon. We are, I'm not quite finishing up yet, but we did go through a lot of discussion that you may want to go catch the replay. Um, you may be interested in what, you know, was we talked about here today. And you know what? We didn't even get into Amroth Ron. Oh my God. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch gears and get into Admiral Thrawn. And um, first off, my first question to you guys is, what are your favorite moments with Admiral Thrawn, whether it's in the Heir to the Empire, the Thrawn trilogy, Outbound Flight? Um, uh, what are the ones? Because he's not necessarily in um, the Thrawn duology. It's um, He is a clone, but there's no interaction. Um, <clears throat> so what's your favorite story regarding Thrawn? Grand Admiral Thrawn. For me, um, let me see here. Basically, the heir to the Empire scenes between him and Pelion. Right. There's, I think that, like, the Zahn hit gold with the trilogy, right? We all know that. Um, Zahn, that trilogy was what caught the company's notice on keeping continuity and tying everything into the saga because of how big of a hit that was. And um, so I will forever thank Zahn for his brilliant writing with that and helping Lucasfilm at the time decide to keep everything. They were still keeping somewhat continuity because we did have... Um, George give Zahn Western Games material and all this other stuff to help keep consistency, right? But that was basically the pivotal point on making sure everything ties into the saga as coherently as possible. So yes, they had to go and correct and retcon a little bit of stuff because before then, you know, it wasn't as kept up. It was a decision at the time. And so they had to take care of that, right? So I don't... Um, hold that against that evolution part of the lore, E lore. So if you know the E lore and the evolution, I really don't hold stuff prior to that against as much as anything prior or after that, really. Um, so that's how I see that. Let's see. Outbound flight. Yes. Um, what's the difference between an error and a mistake in in sign? Oh, okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. And I'm like, what, what, um, Thrawn's asteroid moved to completely neutralize Coruscant. Blah, blah, blah. That was genius. Love that battle. Right. That was. And so I think you guys been hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, the rumors of Heir to the Empire or the Thrawn trilogy. They say Heir to the Empire, but I'm thinking maybe they're thinking of the Thrawn trilogy and as a whole. But it's always just Heir to the Empire when they announce this. But Heir to the Empire film, that was going to be a movie. Now it's going to be a film on Disney+. Plus. That's the rumor. I did a video. I've done, like, I did a video 
about how Disney Lucasfilm Thrawn doesn't fit, it's not the same as the George Lucas era Thrawn. Like there's a lot of things that are not similar, even to how he gets to where he's at. Um, all, um, everything, like everything that all his experiences are different. So it gives a different aspect of him, I guess you can say. So they're two completely different people with the same name. And I did a recent video on that rumor regarding, um, how heir to the empire or the Thrawn trilogy would not fit inside the Disney star Wars full lore. One of them is if you guys remember the Ron questioning Mara Jade about who she is as Emperor's hand and how she had to um, share proof of who she was and how he brought up on his um, hollow all the um, all the shoulder jewelry that she you know that a woman can wear on a gown and she had to prove which one's hers to prove who she is to him. She was at Thron's private ceremony um, promotion ceremony. With the new lore, she wasn't there whatsoever. And I think that is a pivotal thing, a little pivotal plot point for that um, trilogy and for Mara and Thrawn's arc, as well as Palpatine's, because she was basically, she was known to be Palpatine's favorite. And so he always had her by his side. And they didn't know who she was. She was just his favorite girl, his favorite dancer, what have you. Um, and now she's nowhere to be found. She would have been at all the important events that Palpatine has because she would need to know, right? We do not see her. She is not seen anywhere when it comes to Thrawn's um, ceremony to Grand Admiral, none of that. And I think that also that it, that is very important to that story. So that is one significant thing why that does not fit, why we would not fit whatsoever. And um, there's other points we can go. And I was thinking about either doing a part two to that video or doing book one, book two, and book three and breaking it down. Um, according to the rumor and according to Disney Star Wars and how it doesn't fit. Let's see here. Thrawn's compare and contrast, OG's Thrawn compare and contrast video. Yeah. And then we see here. I bet they will race swap Mara. Hollywood is a on a crusade against redheads. And that's what I see too. A lot of people talk about that. They probably won't keep her a redhead if she does that. But if they bring her in, it's only a name only. It's not who she is. It's not her experiences that uh, make her why we love her. She will have no reason to want to really kill Luke Skywalker now. There's no reason for her to fully know Thrawn. Oh, and the Chimera can't be at the, um, at the battle of, um, of Endor at the battle, the Endor battle, because right now Thrawn is in it with Ezra and Purgle took off with them, right? So we know that the Purgle, the space whales take off with him, right? And and so there's no way. And so in the Heir to the Empire, Pelion recalls he has to take command of the Chimera and he is witnessing the destruction of the Empire and he witnessed is the executor, which is the prominent ship that you want to be on to be promoted. That's Vader's ship. Basically falling down into the Death Star and being destroyed. Now the Chimera can't be there. And I think that's another pivotal one that, that you can't really replace. You can't replace. Chimera is such a phenomenal, epic ship. Um, it is Thrawn ship and now it's with him. So there you go. Yeah, people say, oh, well, yeah, of course they can. It could just be something else. No, it can't. It can't. Because there's a reason why Thrawn returns and chooses Pelion and the Chimera as his um, as his ship. You know, so we don't have that transition whatsoever. Um, Chaos Man, Thrawn is also definitely physically, um, different physically. He and all ships now have Pupils and their facial structures completely different, right? They have that big old huge arch. They almost look like they have a moth kind of face like Tarkin does <clears throat> with he predominant cheekbones and stuff, which I thought was weird. <clears throat> They're not, um, there's no reason for Disney to use Marjay. None. <clears throat> None whatsoever. Let's see here. 
This is why I avoid <clears throat> anything Disney. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't need to get mad about it since I block any Disney sites and ads soon as they pop up. <clears throat> there you go. That's the way to keep your sanity. I do research because I do. I want to know what's going on in a way because I like to compare. I like to share it with you guys saying, hey, guess what? <laughs> They're trying to do this with this EU character. It doesn't make sense, right? So um, I try to do that. And so they all agree here. So we are almost coming. We got 20 minutes until 11 my time. <clears throat> and um, so let's see here. So what other, like, let's see here. Let's talk about Eric, the Thrawn trilogy here. Another thing that, another reason why it won't fit is in the new lore, Honiger doesn't get destroyed during the Clone Wars. And Vader doesn't come in <clears throat> as a savior and um, basically trick the Nogri into servitude. That doesn't happen. And so we don't get this plot twist of the um, Leia coming in and being being discovered as <clears throat> the Malari Ush, right? And um, our heir to Vader. And then really, and then shares with them that they were being tricked and deceived <clears throat> to where, you know, um, let me go ahead and clear my throat real quick. To where um, they plan, you know, to get revenge, which leads Rook up to killing at the right pivotal moment to killing Thrawn to get revenge and also to liberate themselves from the empire. And um, so we don't get that. And I think that's another pivotal plot point there. And now Rook is dead as well. So there you go. Let's see here. Um, whoops, I thought I clicked it. Let's see here. I think the short story missed encounter states as much. Oh, and I can't, I have to go through all these short stories too i have some of them i vaguely remember some of them i missed and didn't read um <clears throat> thrawn was already ruined in rebels he could nearly beat or he could not near or he could nearly beat the new republic with a fractured empire but can't be a small rebellion with the empire at its height right there you go boom mic dropped right perfectly said he, he nearly had, he was always one step ahead. And that's when, when you read um, the duology, Hand of Thrawn and Visions of the Future, the, the, the Hand, duology, Hand of Thrawn duology, um, Spectre of the Past and Vision of the Future, um, they, they, are, they are like on edge because they think that Thrawn survived, right? And, um, and, um, And I guess you could say the actor, <laughs> and I forget his name, sorry, but the actor that um, acts as Ron does a great job and he still remains one step ahead or a few steps ahead of the New Republic. And that is classical Theron. He st always stays one, two or three steps ahead. And yes, the, um, the, the capture, I wouldn't say capture, <clears throat> but the um, the plant the cloaked asteroids over Coruscant to keep them subdued, I guess you could say, and out of the way, Coruscant out of the way. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. And um, let's see here. Sorry, I was talking about Vader finding the Nogri a few months after. Oh yeah, that's right. <clears throat> the missed encounters. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. That was that was a that was a um, good story, and how he went up to them and how they were so impressed with him. Like no greys are beasts; they are natural predators. They are very stealth wise, almost like wraiths, I guess you can say. And um, so they gave the stormtroopers, or they gave the troopers, um, a hard time. But when Vader came in, man. They they basically he gained their respect by how how he um, 
how he reacted towards them. So I recommend that so much. De uh, definitely think Hand of Thrawn would have been better had we not known about fake Thrawn like the young Jedi Knights with Palpatine. Yeah, I know. But I think eventually we had to lead up to knowing. But I, yeah, but I think if they didn't reveal he was fake from the beginning, but then it would also completely change the story. And I don't know. So that that's one up for debate because I think I liked how they did that. But I also get your point on, you know, comparing it to the Young Jedi Knights. So that's very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we have Mexican Iron Man. What's up? And I have a super sticker here. Let me see what it is on my phone here. And um, did I miss a super chat or anything? No, I don't think I did. Let's see here. And it is a a mug here, a co uh, the coffee um, super um, super sticker. So cheers to you. Thank you so much. Three ninety nine. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. So with that, you know, so we already know that, you know, the Thrawn from the new lore, the faux lore and the original lore are completely different. What happens in the Thrawn trilogy is completely different than what's going on in the timeline for Disney Star Wars. I really don't think that the retconning are getting rid of the Disney trilogy with everything you see in the lore being brought out. It's all tied together. They're even having a novel come out or a book like essentials book coming out and it's about the timeline and how all of it ties together. So um, I think that's really interesting as well. <clears throat> so they're still on track with what they want to do with their lore. And that's rightfully so that's let, let them have it, you know, let, let them be at it with it, you know, and stuff, you know, but the thing is, is that they're not going to retcon or erase. Um, the, it's none of that they are in fact the poster for um the the star wars convention someone was I, you know i've seen people say oh well there's nothing of the disney trilogy on there you know so they're so that's proof you know so they're using that as another thing of proof and i'm like really it has bb8 every single thing on there represents some timeline inside the star wars era no, they don't have Ray. No, they don't have Kylo or any of that. But they do have BB-8, which tells me they're not. Okay. And then I did my research. So I go on to the, the Star Wars convention website. And they have their trade buttons that you can purchase and trade with others and collect. Well, they have the OT, the PT. They have the Disney Trilogy. They have the Mandalorian. They have the Book of Boba Fett. They have all the timelines in there that you can collect buttons for, including Ray, including a few things of Kylo, um, you know, and all that. You know, you have Babu Frick, I guess that's his name, and all of that. So it's it's not, it's not, because if it was, they wouldn't even be printing out pins and stuff like that. You know, so that's, so don't be fooled, you guys. Don't be fooled. It's not going away. Um, yeah, it's um, it's just you have your main characters freaking out um, verse um, for since we know it's been Thrawn. It's been the tension isn't there um, now. The political stuff. Well, the the readers know what's going on, but they don't. So you got to put yourself in their shoes, I guess you could say, I don't know, but we know what's going on. Uh, we understand why they're freaking out, but we also know what's going on on the other side and how they're staging this to try to gain control. So um, it doesn't take me out of the experience. Um, was fun, but perhaps if Zahn waited till at least halfway to reveal the truth, perhaps it could have worked better. Probably, you know, you never know. I mean, you know, we can sit here and contemplate on all that. Um, I thought it was well done. I rather enjoyed the, the Thrawn duology or whatever. All right, you guys. So I had a great time discussing this with you guys, <clears throat> going over a little bit of Obi-Wan, talking and discussing about what books to pick up if you want to get further into his arc post Revenge of the Sith. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring that back up here one more time and go through it. For those who coming in, we have 23 people here. Um, so thank you so much, you guys. Please hit that like button. Let's go ahead and for those who who are tuning in, these are the books I recommend post Return or Revenge of the Sith for Obi-Wan. I'm so used to saying post Return of the Jedi, but post Revenge of the Sith. 
um, regarding Obi-Wan. So we have, and this is all in reading order, um, Kenobi novel by John Jackson Miller. And then we have um, The Last of the Jedi by um, Jude Watson. So we have The Desperate Mission and Dark Warnings. And so this goes into him, Obi-Wan leaving within two years after his exile to make sure all evidence of the twins' births, um, birth are gone from Polis Massa. And, um, and that, that's, that's well done. And I see that I could see him doing that within the beginning of his exile, making sure all everything's covered so that they're not discovered. Right. So that makes sense. And then we have the life and legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which basically goes into um, Obi-Wan revealing his experience in the Clone Wars to Luke, leaving the journal for Luke to train. All of There's like nice little nuggets in there, and I recommend the read for this one. And then we have Legacy Comic number 16, which goes way into the future, 130 plus years. And this goes into the evolution of Darth Krait, and that's Asherod Het. And we know that he is probably about the same age. He was a Padawan with Anakin. We know that Anakin revealed his slaughter of the Tusken Raiders. We know that Asherod was born and raised in the Tus Tuskens. Sherrod Het's his father. And this, so this goes all the, way, all the way in the future. And I believe this timeline of this flashback was like within five years after Obi-Wan's exile. And um, so it's a great read. It gives us a, a more in depth of what Obi-Wan is dealing with and how if he sees something as a threat, he doesn't leave, but he sends people away in a sense. Um, so that's another good one as well. And then um, a, a nod. So a notable one to read, even though it's mostly about um, Vader is Dark Lord, Rise of Darth Vader. The prologue is about um, Obi-Wan but I recommend reading the whole novel because then you get an idea of what um, Vader, Anakin, now Vader, is dealing with the suit, what he thinks about it, how he has to change his fighting style, all of that. Um, I think that it's a great discovery. It'll really make you understand Vader more. I don't think it even, you know, lessens his threat towards the galaxy or anything like that. It just shows how he has to adapt and what he becomes and how he uses his anger. All of that. I think it's well done. Let's see here. And then Christopher Barker. I'm so sorry. Just catch the replay. There's a lot of great stuff in this today's coffee chat. So catch the replay. Um, enjoy. Leave the comments. Leave me a comment or two after you're done watching. And um, I hope that this helps you, you know, find a book to read regarding Kenobi and getting into his, his lore. Um, thank you, Abu Nas. And then Christopher Barker, OG Star Wars. I kind of want to say why Obi-Wan fight Vader at all in the show. Um, why have Obi-Wan fight Vader in the show? Kenobi fighting Inquisitors should be enough. What the fuck? In a, yeah, in... I, yeah, I can go on a long tangent about that, but we're not going to do that right now. Soul Assassin, hit the like button and become a channel member. Yes, please do support the channel. Subscribe, become a channel member, like, share, all of that good stuff. And Holocron Library Fox, thank you, Laura, um, are for sweetening my breakfast with this. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Christopher Crate should be on the cover, not Obi Wan. False advertisement. Mm, no, I get why they did Obi Wan here because of the context of how he's talking about um, Obi Wan to Kate Skywalker. So, but I get your point. And have a fine day, everyone. You too, as well. And the little paw prints. Thank you so much for you coming in with your guinea pig collective, Tommy. And I hope you have a good day. And again, if you become a um, channel member, I have to add more emojis, custom emojis. You can have fun with the custom emojis. Hmm, maybe I'll do a Darth Cray. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I think, do I have Obi-Wan there? I forgot who I put up now. I think I might have, or I think I was going to add him. So, and um, adios, y'all. <laughs> you guys have a great day. And thank you again for hanging out with me and having this fun conversation. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys, meeting up with you guys next Thursday for Coffee Chat. It's always a pleasure, always a fun. And again, 
check out the merch. I'll have the link in my description here. Um, I, I need to start sharing that wonderful, wonderful merch that I think I'm going to update um, with new images. So we'll see what I come up with. Um, and yeah, and then become a channel member, all of that like, you know, everything, all your coming here and just sitting in the chat with me and discussing is support enough. I do this for you guys to keep the heart of Star Wars in front of you. And that's George Lucas era of Star Wars. So thank you again, you guys, and have a great day.